Welcome, good afternoon, welcome to Match Day. And uh, with us today, Ian Barker is actually in the audience today. So my name is Vince and we have Samantha Snow, uh, a um, uh, basically a, one, you know, a presenter a lot of times for us, but also uh, you know, uh, helps me keep, well, helps keep me in line. Uh, let's do an audio check real quick. Um, uh, Samantha, can we hear you? Hopefully. And then Tracy, can we hear you? Uh, yes. Yes. Great. <laughs> All right. Well, with us today is Tracy Ham, who is uh, the women's coach at UC Davis, and I uh, and uh, thank you very much for for coming on. And I apologize uh, for the earlier mix up. Um, but uh, and I am definitely the ugliest man in the room uh, for this uh, <laughs> webinar. But um, two lovely ladies. So thank you so much, uh, Tracy, for for coming on. And so what we'll do is we're just going to talk a little bit about your journey for about 15, 20 minutes. Talk about the movie. And maybe your experience uh, at the UEFA course, because I think a lot of people like to hear that, so it'd be great. Um, and Samantha will chime in, and of course, Mr. Barker on the other end will, <laughs> right, will do what he does. So um, I'm going to maximize you, and we'll go ahead and uh, go in, just let's just start right now with a little bit about your journey. How did you get to where you are? Right, and we met at San Francisco State, so you can go sure. from. <laughs> Your playing days to where you're at now. That'd be fine. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I'm uh, born and raised in the Bay Area. Um, I played for La Miranda and Mustang growing up and got a scholarship to play at Cal and loved my experience at Berkeley. I had a great four years there. Um, I graduated in 2006 and played for a few seasons on the WPSL for the California Storm with Jerry Zanelli. Um, and then started the night the WPS started and I got drafted to play for the FC Gold Pride um, and then spent my second season at Atlanta Beat. Um, in between seasons I play or I coached at uh, Cal as, um, as the assistant coach. Um, after the WPS um, I went to grad school at Boston University. I got my master's in sports psychology. Where you, um, met, you met our uh, mutual friend Fritz. So Fritz, yes. Hi, yeah. Fritz, if you're yeah. there. <laughs> if he's there. I don't know. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, that's okay. Um, after after BU, um, I moved back to California, and I got the head coaching job at Santa Rosa Junior College, where I was for three seasons. Um, had a killer time there. It was a really great experience. Um, did well enough to um, get hired at San Francisco State as the head coach. Where I was there for four years, and again, really, really great experience. Those women—they changed my life. That program changed my life, and um, did well enough to have the athletic director from UC Davis reach out. And I've been at UC Davis for one year. Fantastic! How'd your uh, how'd your year go? It was good. I think it was fair. You know, results were fair, and uh, <laughs> inheriting a team, and you know, I love the players. Really, really smart, intelligent women, and very driven, very passionate. So um, we're going to make moves and keep getting better and better and turn this into a powerhouse. Yeah, no, it's awesome. Uh, I, don't, I don't doubt that either. Um, <laughs> but uh, so, you know, obviously we're in these, you know, uh, turbulent times, right? With these unique times with, so I'm sure like a lot of the college coaches we've had on here, you're like, you know, what the heck's going to happen? This fall, <laughs> right. And uh, so any thoughts on that or, what are you hearing? Anything? Or anything yeah, like you know, I, I for me, I'm just like very positive person and uh, just trying to make the best of this like everybody else is, I'm sure. Um, you know, but I, I think, you know, where we're at right now is it's just such a big question mark that we're just kind of operating like business as usual, expecting to start August 4th. Yeah. Um, and until I hear something different, we're just going to keep moving forward and um, training over the summer to get ready and prepped. And uh, I think this fall is just going to be such an interesting college season for everybody because it's yeah. really about the accountability is all placed on the player and who wants to show up and who's ready since there's not a lot that coaches can do or demand. Uh, yeah. You know, so it's really about just personal accountability and, and who wants to come in ready to rock. Yeah, no, very good. Uh, Samantha, do you have a question or anything? Have you formulated <laughs> one or two? Yeah, yeah, I do have a question. So thanks for sharing your journey with us as well. Um, what is there a moment along that journey that you had or a person in particular that really kind of helped you make that decision? Like, yes, coaching is what I want to do as a profession, because I know it is so hard, at least for a lot of women to make that decision and want to do that. So what moment or what person helped influence that for you? 
gosh. Well, I think when I was playing in Atlanta, um, I, I, you know, I was 26 and I, I was kind of like realizing that I was starting, I was thinking about the game in a much different way. And I'd been coaching club for about eight years at that point and uh, had coached at Cal and just, I started to really think about the game more from a coaching perspective than playing. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I kind of missed being on the field in that capacity. Um, so I went to, when I went to Boston to do my master's, uh, I thought I was going to be a sports psychologist. That was I thought I had a really good grasp on the mental side of the game, and then mm -hmm. I realized like very quickly, like doing like kind of like the clinical hours, that I was not really that interested in like sitting in a room hearing about people's feelings all the time. Um, <laughs> I thought I was much better suited, um, kind of using the education that I received and that knowledge to as a coach and kind of mm -hmm. impart, um, you know, a lot of the the different material that I learned uh, and felt like I was much. I, I miss being on the field, so it was a better uh -huh. way for me to incorporate kind of the educational piece um, into, you know, the actual on-field kind of coaching parameters, yeah. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Although being a college coach uh, on the women's game, you do sit in a room and listen to their feelings a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I, try, I try not to, but, you know, I got to incorporate it somehow. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, I just feel like, you know, coaching for me, it, it's it's the best part of my day, and I really quickly mm -hmm. realized that when I got to Santa Rosa um, that it's something that I, once I got there, I was like, I want to be the best at this. I want to make sure that I don't think about the game as a player and I kind of take the, take the cleats off for a sec and yeah. put on a different hat and make sure that I'm doing whatever I can to provide like the best information for my teams. Um, and that obviously included educating myself and going through the kind of the coaching badge process and, mm -hmm. um, you know, I got my second master's while I was at Santa Rosa also in coaching and athletic administration. I was like, I want to know all the things. So I just want to make sure that I, I don't miss anything and um, I can be the best possible coach for my players and my teams. And sure. nice. Oh yeah, go ahead, Vince, because I know you want to ask her about her educational journey. No, no, no. I was just, when you talked about the coaching badges, I, you know, that's really kind of the, uh, you, you know, your movie and Fritz has been telling me all about it. And I'm like, oh, okay. You know, and uh, he's your biggest fan, by the way. And, uh, <laughs> um, I thought, yeah, that you know. So I went on, and I and I looked at, and I I think when I first met you, you were just coming back from the UEFA course, mm -hmm. I, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. So let's talk about your badges and how this happened. And you went, you know, you're here in the in the states, but you ended up in you the UEFA course in, in Wales. Yeah. In so. Wales. Basically, and this is kind of in part with the movie, uh, the documentary called Coach. Um, so when I, I applied to get waived into the uh, the C license through the U.S. Soccer Federation, and I had done my E and my F when I was, you know, like 20 years old. Um, and all I wanted to do is skip the D license uh, and go into the C. Mm. And, uh, you know, there was, there's pro professional playing waivers. And it yeah. said that you had to have played three years, and I only had played Two, but I graduated college in 2006 and the pro league didn't start till 2009. So there was a three year gap where there wasn't like an opportunity to play professionally, um, you know, under their terms, but the WPSL, which I did play in was all professional players that had just finished WUSA. So it was like Leslie Osborne and CC and Brandy Chastain and, you know, Tiffany Roberts and these like ballers that, you know, I was playing with and I'm like, well, this is the pro league. There's nowhere for us to go. And so I yeah. don't think it was anything malicious from the right. US Soccer Federation. They just didn't, they wrote the rule not expecting to exclude an entire 50% of our demographic, yeah. you right. know? And right. so, yeah, there was no like ill will or anything. And they just hadn't considered that women might want to be pursuing this or that that rule eliminated, you know, the opportunity for women. Um, so what I did is in my research, because I'm really bad at hearing no and like accepting that, um, yeah. I uh, found that there's a foreign waiver um, also, a foreign license. And I actually thought licenses was like very American. And like to coach here, you had to have a license. I didn't realize that was like a full international thing also. So I found in Wales um, that they there was a residential, you know, UEFA B course, but it was only for professional players. And I was like, well, if my own country didn't recognize my playing experience, I don't I kind of didn't expect for, for, you know, Wales or UEFA, which is, you know, like the, the highest tier of kind of coach education in the world right. um, to allow me in. And I just applied and I was kind of under the impression, like, you don't ask, you don't get, like, just put yourself out there, see if it happens. Um, and when they let me in, I was horrified slash terrified, excited, like, well, now you have to go, you know? So um, when I went, I, you know, I flew there kind of by myself, navigated wow. the whole thing. and. 
I got there and they have like a circle, you know, table set up with everyone's name tags. And I, I walk into this room and, you know, there's like Peter Crouch and, you know, Steve Sidwell and Ryan Shawcross. And I'm like, what am I doing here? Like mistake, mistake, leave. Um, and so it was awesome. So like, you know, everyone's sitting down. Of course, everyone's like broing out and they see each other. What's up, man? And I'm just like this girl in the corner. And there was one other girl in the course and she walked in like kind of the last person. I'd be like locked eyes. We're like, we're going to be best friends this week, you know? So she came and sat down and everyone has to get up and introduce themselves. And, you know, I'm like one of the last people to go. And of course, I'm like so nervous because everyone's talking about their experience, you know, and everyone is from either England or Wales for the most part. Right. And so I get up and I'm like, obviously like super California and I'm so nervous. I'm like, hi, I'm Tracy. I'm American. Like everyone's like, duh, you know, oh, so embarrassing. But um, anyway, it was, it was so awesome. And I, I couldn't write fast enough. The instructors and the mentors, I mean, unbelievable. Like it, I was so exposed to such a different way about thinking about the game and just the detail, um, the way that they extract detail from the game, put it into training sessions and how you build your sessions based on, um, you know, finding a problem, creating solutions. It was so foreign and different to the way that I'd been coached, um, you know, my whole life. Um, and I, I mean, it was so incredible. I was there for 10 days, ended up passing, which was like winning the Olympics, I think the equivalent. Um, and I, the, a couple of months later, they said that they were going to do a international UEFA A because the UEFA A normally you have to live over there and they go to your club and they watch you run sessions. Um, so we ended up doing, it's about 400 hours of coursework, which was insane. Um, and then you have to go back, I think it was two or three times to, to Wales for a couple of days to do in-person, you know, lectures and, uh, presentations. Um, and then you do eight film sessions and mentoring. I mean, it, it's very, very intense. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, you know, I, like, I couldn't say yes fast enough. I was like, absolutely. Like, yeah. you know, when I got back from doing the B, my assistant coach at the time was like, who are you? Like, this is amazing. I was like, I know, right? Like, this is crazy. So um, it was, it, the UFA was, I mean, unbelievable, but you know, it all started with just US soccer telling me no. And I was like, no, I don't accept that. So anyway, what was interesting is after I got my UEFA B, I went back and I reapplied to US soccer and they let me skip the D and the C altogether with my UEFA B and jump straight into the B license. So. All right. Wow. <laughs> but uh, I mean, what what a journey, right? But you know, I mean, uh, you're right. I mean, I, they were they were probably really and well. I do remember because I was with U.S. Soccer at the time. Um, they were really literal about the rule about the waiver, and yeah. So it was in, it's interesting. But but you know, everything uh, you know, there's always a reason, right? You know, and and uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm grateful for it. I mean, it, it changed my life. It really did. Them telling me, you know, this wasn't going to work. It, it, it's like the beginning of the end of everything for me, yeah. which is really kind of amazing. And I, I'm, you know, I'm pretty grateful because now at least there's, there's more awareness. And I think for me moving forward, it's like, it's got to be handled kind of on a case by case basis based on like age mm -hmm. and ab availability. And even now, you know, I know we have a pro league here, but you know, there's only nine teams and it's really only like a hundred Americans, which again, like you have MLS, there's USL, there's so many different opportunities for men to get that kind of experience to get waved in or, you know, whatever it is. So I, I hope that, you know, kind of moving forward, at least we cast light on, you know, maybe some of the inequity that, that is, that goes into kind of the waiver process or the licensing process in general right. here. Right, right. Um, thank you for sharing everything. Samantha, do you have a, do you have any questions or anything to ask her? And yeah. So along your whole journey, then what's the best piece of advice that you received? Honestly, I, I think it's really um, just making sure that you like straight stay true to like who you are as a coach. Mm -hmm. um, I think when I first started, you know, you, you obviously try to like, you're going to kind of imitate the people that you played for or, mm -hmm. you know, you're like, I'm supposed to be really tough and this is supposed to be me. And, <laughs> you know, like it, it's hard to kind of find who you are, but when you're authentic and you can give your players kind of autonomy and empower them, like that's the type of coach that I am. And like, I, it's really hard for me not to be me, like very clearly, um, you know, <laughs> so I feel like I like, you know, when you're, genuine in your approach and it's it's very real your players like are yeah. it's such it's so much easier for them to digest information and buy in and be passionate about it mm -hmm. if you're passionate and and you're you um and so i think 
that's probably the best piece of advice is you don't have to be something that you're not. And also it's okay to not know everything. Yeah. You know, I think as coaches, when we put ourselves in different environments, like we're, we feel like we're expected to know everything. Like, well, mm -hmm. there's like no fun in that. There's no growth. If we're asking our players to focus on growth over outcome, well, we have to do the same thing. Like we can't have already arrived when we're 35, right? Like yeah. I hope that I'm still learning. Like I'm furiously writing when I'm 50, you know, 55 mm -hmm. writing stuff down. Like I, I hope I still continue to learn and I don't ever want to feel like I know everything because then how boring is that, right? So it's just continually good. like exposing yourself to new information and being okay with that. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Well, we got a couple questions from the chat box. Um, one is, uh, how would you give confidence to young women, a young woman not sure about taking coaching education? Because, you know, you went to Wales, you said there was one other lady, you know, one other you know, woman there. And uh, that's, it's unfortunate, but that's the feeling that that's mm -hmm. what happens here. And mm -hmm. uh, so any, any tips or any advice there? Yeah. You know, this sounds like so silly and so simple, but it's, there's so much truth behind it is the hardest part is showing up. I mean, just putting yourself in an environment um, and giving yourself the chance even to fail, you know, potentially and for me, like failure doesn't exist. Failure is just, you know, it's like a setback, it's adversity, it's something to overcome. Um, so I don't ever look at it like that, but just, just, you know, it's not even confidence. It's like, I think the more that you put yourself out there and the more you survive something, then that's how you build confidence. It's like, okay, I got through this. Like the UEFA B, like I got through it. That gave me so much. Like if I had just done the US soccer B, I probably wouldn't have had that same confidence going yeah. to the UEFA. But like I knew what to expect. I had survived something. I had challenged myself and I overcame it, you know, and, and just giving yourself the best chance for success, you know, is really just showing up and actually putting yourself in an environment where you might be exposed and going into it knowing that and knowing it's gonna be okay. And guess what? Everybody else probably feels the same way. Like going into that experience, like a lot of the men were pro players and they're still, they're, you know, current pro players. So as we're going through and we're building sessions, you know, they're asking me like, well, I don't know, how do you defend, you know, in the final third, yeah. you know, and I'm like, I well, let me help you, you know, like I actually know how to build a session on that, you know, and so a lot of them, like they're like, they're just players like they, you know, in, in any coaching education environment, everyone's feeling the same way as everybody else's. Some people might just like be better at flexing on someone or like showing confidence and pretending right. that, but everyone's in the same situation and just yeah. knowing that. Um, yeah, yeah you're then, all vulnerable. I mean, everybody's vulnerable, right? At that time. So. Thank you. Um, and yeah. then from, from our Match Day Supporters Club, which we have one member officially of that group um, for the Match Day webinar series that we're holding. Um, the question is, where can we watch the movie? Great question. Yeah. Um, right now it's in like the film festival circuit. Uh, so it was right. actually like a bunch of different places. But Starting June 1st, mm -hmm. they're actually going to embed it in the website. So it'll be available for, I think they're going to make it available for one month and then take it back down. So it's just, it's coachthemovie.com yep. um, and check mm -hmm. on June 1st and it should be on there. It's, it's 25 minutes. It's the short doc. Um, you're more than welcome to watch and ask me questions or anything like that. No, that's fantastic. Uh, so we do have a, one more question. I don't want to keep you because you've been really gracious. <laughs> um, do you feel like you got more out of the UEFA courses or the U.S. soccer courses? Uh, well, without knocking, you know, <laughs> U.S. soccer, because um, I want to work for them one day. I'm like, can right, I coach right, right. for the national team? That'd be great. Um, <laughs> no, I, uh, you know, it, it, they're they're different, um, and there's yeah. different ways of thinking about the game. So I don't really think about it like in terms of like a comparison, worse. better right. or worse, they're just very different. And mm -hmm. so I thought they were both very useful yeah. um, in terms of like just professional kind of development and like personal development, like challenging myself to do something that hadn't been done before was probably the best thing I've ever done for myself from a personal yeah. you know, and personal standpoint. Cause it was, you know, it, it, I exposed myself to new information going to Wales and, and, and pursuing that. But, you know, coming back and, you know, doing the U.S. Soccer B course, um, it's just a very different way of thinking about the game and running sessions. And so, I mean, both very valuable, um, kind of non, not really comparable in a lot of different ways. Um, 
you know, it was actually really confusing because I just learned how to do something in this way, in this format. And then you go somewhere else and you're like, well, that's not what we just did. So in any way, it, it gets you thinking about the game and it exposes you to new information and it's all valuable. Very good. Um, good answer, by the way. So I think <laughs> your national team aspirations are still intact. Um, so, uh, Coach Snow, I'll leave you with the last question or thought um, and then we'll wrap it up. Yeah, I guess last thought. I really like how you said that surviving it is, uh, you know, the way that you build that confidence and kind of like that facing it till you make it. So I, I appreciated that. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, it's great. Um, so thank you so much. And uh, I'm, I'm going to have to buy Fritz a beer at, at Upland Brewing <laughs> for recommending you. But, you know, you know, so you're we're, not we're coming. What's that? You're not going to get Tracy one the next time you see wow. her? Just going to say, <laughs> we're in California for January. Everyone knows I'm down for beer. So all right. it's all good. <laughs> We'd love for you to come and present and help and, and you know, uh, share, if you don't mind sharing your talents. Um, there too in Anaheim, we hope we have the convention uh, in okay. January. Um, fingers crossed. Yeah, fingers crossed. But I will definitely buy you a beer. But uh, <laughs> thank you so much, Tracy. And um I thank everybody on the other end and appreciate your time. Samantha, as always, thank you so much for helping me and making me look better. But uh, uh, appreciate it. Um, and tomorrow we're going to have Nicole Hercules, who's the chair for the Black Coaches Association. Uh, she's going to talk about uh, her role there. And, and then tomorrow afternoon, Tracy, you're more, you're more than welcome to attend. We do TGIF. And yeah. More of a yeah. little bit of soccer, but a lot of just joking around and having fun. So <laughs> right on. So, so I'll send you that link if you want to. Uh, but Great. no yes, information. Please. So thank you so much, Tracy. And thank you, everybody. And Samantha, thank you again. Thank yeah, you. So much, Bye. Bye. <laughs>